Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. Today, inshallah, we'll start the chapter of salah, which is a chapter of prayer. Uh, linguistically, salah means, what does it mean in, in the Arabic language? The word salah. The original meaning is the dua, like supplication. The, this is the original meaning. Um, Allah said in the Quran, وَصَلِّ عَلَيْهِمْ إِنَّ صَلَاتَكَ سَكَنٌ لَهُمْ Ordering or advising the Prophet وسلم, to make salah for them. He says, your salah brings tranquility and peace to them. Um, which means your dua, your supplication for them, your invocation to Allah will bring that. It does not mean for the Prophet وسلم, to actually pray, pray, for, uh, pray for them, an actual prayer. Um, and, and also in the hadith, Prophet Sallallahu says, إِذَا دُعِيَ أَحَدُكُمْ فَلْيُجِبْ فَإِنْ كَانَ مُفْطِرًا فَلْيَطْعَمْ وَإِنْ كَانَ صَائِمًا فَلْيُصَلِّ The meaning is that whenever one of you is called for a meal or a feast, he should go. If a friend of you calls you to come and eat with them, you should go. If you are not fasting, you should eat. But if you are fasting, when kana sa'iman fal yusalli, he should pray. Yusalli, do salah. Doesn't mean he should go get up and do two rakat in his house. <laughs> yeah, it means he should make dua and supplication, invocation uh, for those people because they were nice to him. Uh, he should do that uh, for them. And there's many uh, hadith like the same, Allahumma salli ala Ali Abi Awfa, somebody brought his sadaqah, uh, charity. Prophet ﷺ said, Allahumma salli ala Ali Abi Awfa. Wa Allah, bestow your mercy. Here it means to bestow the mercy. If it comes from Allah, it means to bestow the mercy. If it comes from malaika, in Allah malaikatahu, yusalluna ala nabi. It means dua or istighfar, that the angels are making istighfar or invocation. Uh, if it comes from an individual human being, it could mean either the dua to make invocation or supplication, or it could mean the actual salah based on the context, based on the context, okay? The ayah, وَصَلِّ عَلَيْهِمْ إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ كَسَكَنُ اللَّهُمْ means to make dua for them, but it could also mean making salah, meaning the salah of janazah, for them. Um, and there's difference. If you say salla ala, it difference. Uh, it is different from salla ila uh, or salla li, or just with a lamb. Uh, salla ala means to deliver or to to make your invocation for that person or supplication for that person. But salla ila means towards. Salla ila al Kaaba. I have prayed towards. If you were put the ila, it becomes towards. Uh, if you put the lamb, salla li lillah, means he is directing salah for Allah, for the sake of Allah Azza wa Okay? Um, I say this, why do we have to talk about this a little bit in detail? Because uh, some ignorant people, and, and they deliberately bring up such confusion. They say, oh, uh, Islam calls for worshipping human beings. Because you say, because you say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad means, Oh Allah, bestow your mercy and blessing on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So uh, you have to tell them that, the first, first of all, the word salah has different meanings based on the context. And also, it will have different meaning based on what letter is attached. Uh, the, it's called preposition, I think. The, we, in Arabic, we call it huruf al-ma'ani. Those letters will change the meaning. So, huruf al-ma'ani means the meaning will change based on the letter you attach that verb to. Salla ila is different from salla ala, from salla li. Uh, and, and so that's important as well. You have to look at what... What? Is that nahu or sarf? That's called sarf. Nahu, nahu, nahu sarf. Yeah, that would fall under, that would fall under, yeah, uh, close to nahu a little bit, yes. Um, so uh, so th that's an important meaning to know. 
Uh, Salah, of course, nobody denies, none of the people who are Muslims would deny that it is an obligation on every Muslim to pray five times a day and also to pray the Jummah and so on. Um, and this is from the Quran and the Sunnah and the Hadith are plenty and it's a consensus of all scholars and all Muslims in general. Uh, today we'll just talk a little bit about the virtue of the Salah. Uh, salah. Uh, purifies the soul and keeps the person away from unlawful and, and indecent behavior. In tanha anil wal munkar wala dhikrullahi akbar. Salah makes the person uh, avoid fahsha wal munkar means sinning, especially indecent sins such as adultery and th these kind of sins. The salah purifies the soul and keeps the person away from it. Wala dhikrullahi akbar. And it contains the dhikr of Allah Azza wa which is the highest goal that because it brings the person close to Allah Azza wa Jal. Qad aflaha man tazakka wa dhakara asma rabbihi fasalla. It's a cause for success. Qad aflaha man tazakka means he has succeeded. Um, it is combined with the dhikr of Allah wa aqim as salata li dhikri. The reason and the purpose of salah is to remember Allah Azza wa Jal. It's not just a few movements up and down and uh, prostration and bowing, no raising your hand. The physical movements are part of it, but they are not the essence of the salah because Allah says, The purpose is to remember me. It is the soul of the salah, the spirit of the salah is to be focused and conscious of Allah Azza wa Jal during the salah khushur, the meaning of khushur. Uh, it's also combined with zakah, waqimu salata wa atu zakah, because salah is the right of Allah Azza wa Jal, while zakah is being nice to the creation of Allah Azza wa Jal. And the religion of Islam is based on these two basic rights. Number one, the right of Allah Azza wa Jal, and the number two is the right of all the creation of Allah. Um, and that is why people who say, oh, yani, this person is nice to people, how can he be thrown into the fire of hell? We tell them there are two rights. A human being has two rights. And the biggest of the two rights is the right and obligation towards his maker, the one who has been feeding him for 30 years or 40 years, the one who has allowed him, enabled him to breathe and live and be healthy uh, and enjoy life for all these years. He doesn't, doesn't have any right on him. The number one right on a human being and obligation is towards the maker. Then towards the creation and even the creation there are grades number one come the parents and then you know your family and so on then your neighbor and and, and, and so on, and then your relatives and then your neighbor and so on so we tell them no if he has neglected totally totally the right of Allah and disbelieved in his creator then how could he ask this creator to admit him to paradise it belongs to Allah Allah will only uh, admit the believers according to the hadith only believers are admitted to Jannah uh, salah gives a Muslim strength. Patience gives you strength, but also Salah gives you strength. Uh, <clears throat> salah has to be only for Allah. Has to be only for Allah. Has to be only for Allah. Uh, the, all these texts and um, and then a Salah. Uh, you can look, look in Surah Al Mu'minun. Uh, Allah started with قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ Allah ta talked the, uh, about the success of those believers who have uh, who are mindful of Allah during their salah and then he ended those verses talking about the qualities of the believer وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَلَى صَلَوَاتِهِمْ يُحَافِظُونَ started with salah and ended with salah if the salah is good then everything else and all the qualities and the morals of the person and the conduct and his behavior and all the acts of worship are uh, are also perfected and rectified. Uh, even in, the, in, in Yom Al-Qiyamah, the first thing that we are questioned about after, of course, the Shahada, after being a Muslim and uh, testifying to the oneness of Allah and the Prophet Sallallahu as his messenger, then comes the Salah. Uh, if the Salah is good, then Salah Sa'ru Amili, then the rest of the deeds, it's, it's, not, it's an easier task. Uh, the Hisab and the judgment will be easier for the rest of the deeds. But if the Salah is corrupt, then it will be a big problem for the person for all his, his other deeds. Now, um, Salah is so important that the Muslim cannot neglect Salah even if he's traveling, even if he's not home. Uh, uh, he cannot neglect Salah even at times of war 
even at times of war, Muslims are supposed to do salah and even do it in jama'ah according to the salat al-khawf, as we know. That's one of the stronger opinions that salat al-jama'ah is so important. Um, that's one of the evidence for that, that salat al-jama'ah is so important that even during war, Muslims are required to do the salah in congregation. Right? Um, للمصلين الذين هم عن صلاتهم ساهون. Woe to those people. The musallin, they, they do pray, but they might delay the salah or neglect parts of it. Uh, they are also warned and threatened by a punishment of Allah. So not only are we required to do the salah, but we are required to be diligent and keep its conditions and etiquettes and keep its time. Of course, number one, the time and do all the arkan, the pillars of the salah and the uh, wajibat, the obligations during the salah and so on. Um, if somebody neglects the salah, the, the, the natural consequence is that الشهوات, he will fall into desire and lust. And that's according to this ayah. The other ayah says, if you keep the salah, if the salah is kept, then a person is kept away from these uh, lust and desire, unlawful of course. Because lawful uh, desire to your lawful wife is something that is praiseworthy, it's not bad. But uh, talking about the unlawful lust and desire, um, if the salah is neglected, then it taba'u shahwat. Adaw salah, once the salah is corrupt, then the person becomes corrupt from that respect. And once salah is perfected, aqim uh, salah, yeah, you're upright with your salah, then you are upright with your, with your conduct as well. Uh, salah uh, requires uh, hidayah from Allah, tawfiq, guidance from Allah, and help from Allah to keep it. Even Prophet Ibrahim, the mighty Prophet Ibrahim, alayhi salatu wasalam, says, Rabbi ja'alni muqeem as salati wa min dhurayti. If Ibrahim, alayhi salam, is asking Allah to help him to do the salah, perfect the salah, perform the salah like Allah is pleased with, then you can imagine how much we are in need for help to do our salah and keep it on time and keep it according to what Allah is pleased with. And there are many ahadith. These are some of the ayat. I quickly, we'll go some, through some ahadith, then we'll end this class. Um, the hadith of Mu'ad ibn Jabal, I'll just mention the part that we, where he talks about the salah because it's a long hadith. Uh, he asked the Prophet uh, about, uh, tell me what should I do to, to enter Jannah and be away from the fire of hell? He says, لَقَدْ سَأَلْتَ عَنْ عَظِيمٍ You've asked about something that is so great because it is the purpose and goal of humanity to be saved from the fire of hell and be admitted to Jannah. This is the goal of your life. He says, you're asking me a question that basically encompasses everything in life. He says, but وَإِنَّهُ يَلَا يَسِيرٌ عَلَى مَنْ يَسَّرَهُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ But it, be, it would be made easy if Allah makes it easy for you. So that's so important. Just like we said, Ibrahim Asalam asked for help for that. If Allah helps the individual then, Salah and keeping the salah will become easy. And that's a blessing from Allah. Then he talked to him, Allah, la bishain, wa salah. You worship Allah, you do not associate anyone with Allah. Then he says, then you perform and perfect your salah. Uh, and told him about what to do. Also he said, wa amr al-islam wa In the same hadith, says that the, the foundation of this matter is al-islam, submission to Allah, tawheed again. The unity of Allah, oneness of Allah, and obeying His Messenger. So the foundation is the Islam. Amuduhu is the pillar that holds the building. Without the foundation, there is no building whatsoever. Without this pillar, this whole building will crumble and fall on top of the, of the on top of the, its uh, in the residence. So this example is so so important. Rasul Amr Islam And then another hadith, Prophet uh, said to Abu Huraira, or Abu Huraira heard him saying that, uh, imagine if you have a river at your doorstep and you take a plunge into that river and do a full ghusl five times a day, could there be any kind of stain on your body or any dirt or, um, uh, and then, uh, or any filth? Um, uh, then the Sahaba, the companions answered, no, impossible for a person to uh, have any uncleanliness on him if he is like this five times a day, he takes a dip and ghusl and a wash in this river. He says, this is the same example of the five salah. يَمْحُ اللَّهُ بِهِنَّ الْخَطَايَا Your sins are wiped away continuously and recurrently by doing the five prayers. Now, um, also the other hadith, 
uh, very important hadith I will mention it in word تحترقون تحترقون فإذا صليتم الصبح غسلتها ثم تحترقون تحترقون فإذا صليتم الظهر غسلتها ثم تحترقون تحترقون فإذا صليتم العصر غسلتها ثم تحترقون تحترقون فإذا صليتم المغرب غسلتها ثم تحترقون تحترقون فإذا صليتم العشاء غسلتها ثم تنامون فلا يكتب عليكم حتى تستيقظوا ما شاء الله The hadith is that تحترقون تحترقون comes from حريق which means you are burning burning with sins, burning with neglect, by, burning by being unmindful of Allah Azza wa Jal. Our Iman is diminishing uh, as long as, you know, we're not mindful of Allah and not engaging in any kind of dhikr or connection with Allah. And this is the meaning of the surah, إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ He's always uh, in a state of loss, continuous loss. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا The only thing that saves you from this loss is Iman and Amal Salih, right? So here the hadith says, تحترقون, you are burning and burning because of the sins and that we acquire sometimes frequently unknowingly because sometimes it's just our way of life, our habit that we are looking around or talking, you know, nonsense and may, uh, engaging in sin we don't even know. Um, one, one time uh, Anas ibn Malik said, وَكُنَّا نَعُدُّ الْكَلِمَةَ من كنا نعد الكلمة من المبقات وإني لا أسمعها من أحدكم في المجلس الواحد عشر مرات. The meaning is that certain words we consider as major sins, and he's talking to the second generation, which are righteous people still. He says, and I could sit with one of you and hear it ten times in one setting, but he says such words that the Sahaba would consider as as مبقات means that they are destroyers. Major sins. Anyhow, so he says here, you are burning and burning, but when you pray the subh, the morning salah, you are washed. The, the, and you take away the, all these sins. غَسَلَتْهَا تَحْتَرِقُونَ مِنْ بِالزِّنُوبِ يعني حراق الهلاك هو من حراق النار استحقاق الهلاك لاقتراف الزنوب الأثام Why did he call the sins? Because he said غَسَلَتْهَا The fire is not washed. What is washed is a sin. But why did he call it تَحْتَرِقُونَ That you are burning. Why? Why do you think? Exactly, because he's talking about the consequence to show you that to show us the gravity. He didn't just call it a sin. He says it's burning. You are burning and burning. But when you pray the morning salah, you have washed it away, washed away the cause for that fire. You have washed away the cause for the fire. And he says, and then he repeated the same happens between subh, the morning salah and the dhuhr salah. Then the Dhuhr Salah will come and wash it and so on, Asr Salah. And then he says, after Isha Salah, you've washed everything. He says, ثم تنامون فلا يكتب عليكم حتى تستيقظوا. Then you go to bed and nothing is written on you until you wake up. رفع القلم, the pen of deeds is lifted at that time when you sleep. That's why we say, نوم الظلم عبادة. You know this thing? <laughs> Yeah, the, the, the sleep, the, the, we have a saying, it's not a hadith, but it's a saying that uh, the, um, the corrupt person, when he sleeps, he is performing ibadah. He's worshipping Allah. <laughs> because he stopped sinning during that time. <laughs> so we're almost done. Sa'ad bin Waqas, the last hadith. Uh, this, these two hadiths are so important. Uh, Two brothers, one of them died, and then the second one died 40 nights later, 40 days later. So the Sahaba were talking about the virtue of the first brother who died earlier, like 40 days earlier, that he was such a righteous man. Uh, then Prophet ﷺ said, what about the other one? Was he not a Muslim? They said to him, yes, he was a Muslim. And he was an okay, he was okay. We don't know anything bad about him. But when they were talking, they were talking about the righteousness of the first one because that was a prominent feature of the first one. But the other one was a regular, you know, regular good Muslim. Uh, uh, and then Prophet ﷺ said to them, you know, you're, you're praising this first one, but you didn't talk about the second one who died 40 nights later. He says, he said, you even know how much his salah could have raised him during these 40, during these 40 days, imagine. إِنَّمَا مَثَلُ الصَّلَاةِ كَمَثَلِ نَهْرٍ غَمْرٍ بِبَابِ أَحْدِكُمْ يَقْتَحُوا فِيهِ كُلْ يَوْمٍ خَمْسَ مَرَّاتٍ فَمَا تَرَوْنَ فِي ذَلِكَ يُبْكُمْ مِنْ دَرَيْنِ فِي نَكُمْ لَا تَدْرُونَ مَا بَلْغَتْ بِهِ الصَّلَاةُ He says the salah, he gave the example of the river in front of the doorstep and that he is washing himself five times a day. He says you never know how much his salah could have raised him in ranks. And the same thing also, another uh, 
um, two men, uh, they're not brothers, but they're from a tribe called Quda'a. They embraced Islam. One of them was martyred. The other one uh, died a year later. Talha ibn Ubaidillah, the Sahabi, says, uh, I saw the one who died a year later, although he was not a martyr. He say, uh, he, I saw him be admitted to Jannah before the martyr, قبل الشهيد. فتعجبت لذلك. He says, I was surprised. How could this be? He went to talk, talk to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أليس قد صام بعده رمضان وصلى ستة آلاف ركعة وكذا وكذا ركعة صلاة سنة. He says, did he not fast the month of Ramadan and he prayed six thousand rakat uh, since since the first one has died and so on. So this shows you the importance of salah. Inshallah, we'll stop here and next time we'll talk about hukm uh, tariq salah. Who neglects the salah? What? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Uh, the hadith says, uh, in the mu'min la yaziduhu umruhu illa khayra. The believer, the longer he lives, the better he is in the sight of Allah. And khayrukum man tala umruhu hasan amal. Another hadith. The best of you are the ones who live the longest and continue performing good deeds. Why? Because just like the, this hadith indicates, it's a blessing for Allah every day that we live. May Allah extend our life with righteous deeds. The more we live in righteous deeds, the higher, uh, inshallah, uh, you get a rank and uh, and the uh, more you distance yourself from the fire of hell and you cleanse yourself from your sins. We'll stop here, inshallah. Yeah.